Number 52 went into the Football Hall of Fame as one of the greatest centers to ever play the game. But what we couldn't see on the field was what was happening underneath his helmet. He was the first modern athlete to be diagnosed with repetitive brain trauma, a condition that would eventually take his life. To think about being my age and having some of the same problems that a 75 or 80 year old man has, uh, no, I never considered that. I was having severe leg pain and, and back pain, and I found out it was strictly from the injury from years ago. I'm in some painful, debilitating pain right now because it's, it's hard for me to walk. It was hard for me to exercise. I go to bed hurting, wake up hurting. I've seen now uh, that I've been out of the league for 20 some years that uh, those injuries, they don't go away. And when I retired at age 38, I was already dealing with um, you know, chronic pain and things that uh, I knew were gonna stick with me for the rest of my life. When you get a neck or back injury as a player, Usually you play through it, that's the thing. It's gonna come back and haunt you 10, 15 years out of your game. When you're out of the game of football, that's when you're really gonna suffer. I was sitting in my office and my secretary came in and said, you realize you've been in here for three hours with the lights off? I was sitting in there doing nothing, just in a daze. I can remember games where I wouldn't remember the whole first quarter that I played, just instinctively. And I didn't know until the second, until I looked at the films the next day. I mean, a lot of guys have really suffered severely from dementia and Alzheimer's, and uh, I'm sure the concussion syndrome had a lot to do with it. There were times when I had certain injuries where I had to make a decision, you know, whether I was going to play. Athletes have literally thousands of blows to their head during their career. I don't think the human brain long term can stand this without risk. I wasn't making millions. We are one team, really? We are? The pre-93 guys have uh, sub-poverty pensions. People think that being an NFL player is all glamour and glitz, uh, but when these guys were playing, they weren't making a lot of money. If you think back, you played, you know, the money really wasn't that great. You played for your team. He's got to go get health insurance. Well, it's preconditions. You know, his, his knees and his shoulders that have been operated on aren't going to be covered because it's a precondition. These guys have no medical. They have no dental. Nothing. I went through periods of time where I wouldn't pay my bills. Uh, my sisters literally were paying my bills for me. Because of my disabilities, I'm not able to work. If you need some help, you need some help. The money that the NFL generates, it, it, it don't go up in millions, it goes up in billions. Every time I went and got some work done, uh, the Bengals insurance would decline. So I had to keep constantly taking them back to court. They should not be absolved of protecting us because of the, uh, the type of game that we play. The whole culture has changed with football. The only thing that's the same right now is the size of the football, the size of the field. The NFL Players Association is more interested in the current players. Uh, and I think the owners are more interested in putting more money in their pockets. The players who helped make this game what it was certainly are owed a debt by those who today are profiting so from the game. Moments, days in the sun, moments, I was second to none, moments, when I knew I did what I thought I couldn't do, like that plane ride coming home from the war that summer, my son was born. The cold so warm, the cold wind can get through. Looking at me now, you might not know it, but I've had my moments.